Hey guys, I am here with Rachel Dorsey, executive producer and a lead strategist at Bone and Gold. Welcome, Rachel, to Pop Style TV. Thank you so much for having me. What fun. So tell me a little bit about your beginnings and your background before Bone and Gold. Um, so I started out in, in marketing in the wine business, and then I moved into nonprofit community building. And that was a hybrid between leadership development, producing events, and, uh, and marketing, a program. Um, so that's how I sort of started out uh, gaining the skills of building a business. From there, I ended up becoming the director of marketing for a bank. And that was such a such a bad fit <laughs> for me because I'm such a creative, but it forced me to learn all about traditional marketing. So now I'm able to pull together my, uh, my skills with traditional marketing, new media marketing, experiential marketing, and pr video production marketing, and put those all together for my production company now. Amazing. Um, so what do you think? You obviously learned pretty quickly that you're a good communicator. Um, when did that happen? When did you learn you are good at it? When did you realize that? And also, what do you think is the biggest hurdle for people to overcome when it comes to communication? Mm, such a good question. I had a boss early in my career who, who actually told me I was a terrible communicator. He told me that, um, that I really needed to work on it because no one was ever gonna take me seriously. And what's funny about that, so, so, I, so I got some training. So, you know, I was like, okay, I'm a terrible communicator and I got some training, but um, he wasn't actually accurate. He, I, I was a good communicator and I could show up in front of a room and, and hold the space and, charm the room and get the get the message across in a very intuitive way but i didn't do it the way he did it and to him his way was right therefore my way was wrong and so i think the biggest lesson there is that we need to know that we have the skills and talents inside of us we may need some training we may need a lot of practice but just because someone else does it their way doesn't mean that your way is necessarily wrong I did want to touch upon Clubhouse because it is such a popular new platform and a lot of people are really enjoying it. So what do you think is, what makes Clubhouse so special, so different? And do you think that it will continue to grow once we're sort of out of this pandemic? I have always felt like Twitter, I didn't have enough space. There were not enough characters allowed for Twitter, so it wasn't for me. And for Instagram, I felt like I had to show, it's changed now, but at the beginning, I felt like I had to show this very highly curated, highly polished version of myself, which never felt true and never felt authentic and always felt like, um, like it was going to have a result of making other people feel bad if I showed up in that way. And I don't want to make people feel bad. That's like the polar opposite of what I'm trying to do in the world. So I really held myself back. I wasn't sure where I fit in. With Clubhouse, it's like I, I'm a talker, I'm a listener, I'm a extrapolator and a synthesizer. I think that's one of the things that perhaps you just pointed out about how I'm different is I, I'm not just trying to speak to speak. I'm trying to hear first and then to respond in a way that's going to be of service. Um, and, and in Clubhouse, you can do that. In, in terms of like how, what's going to happen after the pandemic, I don't know. 
I think that part of the reason it's so successful is the moment in time that we're in and people are lonely and they're desperate for connection. Tell me about the difference between working with a big company and a smaller company. Are there advantages, disadvantages to either? Bigger brands are more comfortable spending that budget because it is a smaller piece of their overall pie. They trust us more. They are a little more flexible with, um, with the choices that we make. And, uh, and smaller brands, even if we are scaled down, it is still, it, what they're spending with us is still representative, representative of a huge piece of their budget. So they are much more, um, much more, not, I, want, I don't wanna say invested, but they, they are a little more nervous typically about that spend. And so for us, the way we approach that is to get, like I, I talk about getting shoulder to shoulder with them. Like our, our success is their success, their success is our success. And we are as invested, if not more, in the final deliverable being exactly what they want. And you also put in a lot of time to helping women develop their business plans. Um, you did point out an interesting statistic that I'd love for you to share with us again. Um, and what are some of the steps that you would advise? Fewer than 2% of female owned businesses ever break a million dollars of annual revenue. And you know, mine happens to be one of them. I worked really hard to get it there. Um, and luckily we're there every year since we, since we broke it, we've been there every year, but it's, it's never a guarantee. And I really believe that 2% is not enough. Don't you hate it when girls, no, no, you didn't hear me. When girls, so I like love it when girls do that. I didn't even say, like, I wish they would do it more, you know? So for me, um, you know, I am hugely passionate about helping women start and grow businesses. I would not have been able to start and grow mine if I didn't have women that I could look up to. So you're certainly paying it forward as well. And um, I know that you have a, a four-step marketing program that you usually share with uh, women and um, you also mentioned some projects that you're working on uh, in the future. I have this four-step marketing plan. It's totally free to anybody who DMs me and just says plan. It's also available on my website at goinglegit.co, but it's just a quick little four-step thing and people can walk themselves through it. Um, and it just demystifies it a little bit and makes it makes a very heavy and challenging concept a lot easier to digest. The other things that I do, um, I do one-on-one -on -one strategic consulting. It's very, um, people will ask me like, is it a program? And I'm like, no, well, it's not really a program. It's very intuitive. I mostly just show up and I ask the right questions. And it's sort of a hybrid between mentorship, coaching, and strategic consulting. I bring all of those things to the table at once. So sometimes it's about removing mental roadblocks or emotional roadblocks. More often, it's about demystifying a process or a strategy so that people can uh, stop feeling stuck and like take action. It's time to delegate if you don't know how to do it, don't have time to do it, or if you hate doing it. I do recommend that everyone checks out your reels because they're super fun and everything sounds uh, so simple and is very nicely explained. <laughs> so uh, thank you for speaking to us, uh, to Pop Style TV, and we look forward to catching up with you once you um, maybe publish a book or something. <laughs> Let's see what's next. Manifest so that for me. <laughs> Yes, posted and see you on Clubhouse. <laughs>